What up, players? It's Wallboss Tay up in this mode. Today we're doing a Fluff Hunters video on Stirland. This is a map that I found off of a website called windsofchaos.com. A very cool resource that the guy was able to get a German artist to take a map that he made and put it into full, well, I guess, sepia color and change the names from from German to English. And so a great resource for some Warhammer Fantasy roleplay stuff. But uh, yeah, today we're taking a look at it for people who have Stirland armies. Now, I've got some other resources open, the Warhammer Wiki and Hammer Wiki, so let's start with Hammer Wiki. The Grand County of Stirland is its official name. It's a province in the Empire in the Old World. The uh, founding tribe was called the Asselborn tribe, ruled by the warrior queen Freya became its first countess when Sigmar became the first emperor. The current elector count of Stirling is Grand Count Graf Alberich Haupt Andersen. The state colors are those of the ruling court, which happen currently to be green and yellow. As such, all members of the army also wear these colors. Most of the nobility field small forces of men-in-arms that are clad in the colors of their liege. However, most sport the color green in some way. So green seems to be the dominant color with a little bit of yellow up to um, half. Stirling itself has a reputation as a being a rural backwater, though this is somewhat undeserved due to the large number of reasonably sized towns and the province's trade with the dwarf hold of Jufbar. Its distance from the centers of power in the empire and its proximity to Sylvania make most people think ill of the region. Its principal exports are woolen goods, wine, salted fish, and woodcrafts. So right there from the very beginning, we see that the rest of the empire considers Stirland as its uh, backwater and people being rural, a little uneducated, uh, behind the times, not really modern, kind of set in old ways of thinking, and that their exports are very much things that you get from farming and uh, and the like. The northern borders are forested, where the southern reaches of the Great Forest is across the Stir River from Talibicland. The forest thins to the south and east. In the east, it splits into Hunger Wood and the Grim Wood, the latter of which marks the edge of the infamous Hell Fen, where Manfred von Karstein was defeated by Count Martin von Krieglix of Stirland in 2154. The Order of the Raven Knights, Templars of Moor, dedicated to the destruction of the undead, owned the small town Sigridhof, situated near the Hunger Wood at the Sylvanian border. Oh, I didn't know that. So that would be Sigridhof. The Hunger Wood. Okay, so that that is cool because the Order of the Raven Knights is something that you might want to add into your Stirland army, either as knights on horseback or maybe even demigriff knights. We know that they are an order of Templars dedicated to Mor, the god of death, which means that we could paint them up in really cool colors, have them in um, maybe add some interesting bits like hooded heads from from Dark Angel kits or something, yeah, something like that, where where we can give these knights their own. Uh, distinct look and uh, and it would be inconsistent in keeping with a fluffy Sterling army. Maybe this, the Sterling army is gathered from towns all around this area from a nobleman, a local nobleman who sends them to Sigrid Hof to help the Order of the Raven Knights and that way you can justify having demigriff knights and knights of the inner circle and stuff because they patrol, oops, they patrol hunger wood That's pretty cool. So you can see Haunted Hills, the names of these areas by Sylvania. Sylvania? Sylvania. Are very um, evil sounding. Not at all German-like, which the rest of these imperial towns kind of, kind of look like. Stirland. All right, what else can we learn? The western point of Stirling is dominated by the Stirhugel, a hilly region that is the first home of the Sturigen tribe thousands of years ago before the Empire. This region is crossed by the Old Dwarf Road and the Nuln Road, and is mostly home to shepherds who trade in the nearby markets of Flensburg and Worden. In amongst the foggy veils, however, are the tombs of ancient chieftains of Sturigen tribes dug into hillsides and built as turf-covered barrows. Locals consider the tombs cursed, and every nearby village has tales of people who went investigating the tombs and never returned. Interesting. Where's that? 
Terhugul. Here. So we know that there are barrows here filled with dead bodies. Maybe an interesting story could be that um, the army is composed of people who heard that there was a necromancer operating here from Stirling, uh, from Sylvania, and he found the barrows and is attempting to raise an undead army, and so they've gone to kind of stop him. Kind of. To very much stop him. Sylvania <laughs> is a place most Sterlanders try to forget about. Indeed, even the Elector Count's infamous tax collectors go there only when accompanied by armed guards. Sterlanders themselves are a short, thick-set people, much like the people of Ostermark to the northeast. They generally have dark hair and are suspicious of strangers. The bloodlines of Sterlin are the most undiluted. Even the lowliest peasant can trace back his line for several generations. Sterlanders are cautious and superstitious, often mocked by outsiders for their slow pace of life and speech. Who do we know that might be considered a backwater and are suspicious of strangers and have a slow pace of speech? <laughs> I think, when I think of that, my mind naturally uh, reverts to think of that honored breed in American culture known as the redneck. But I think even though they're trying to compare it maybe to something like that, although probably not because this is a European-based company, uh, it's easy to, to have, draw kind of correlations, especially when you get into the nitty-gritty like this. They themselves are fond of their ancient customs and of their tendency to take a long view of life. At their best, they're calm, thoughtful, and quite meticulous with the love of long, ribald stories. Their other notable love is of racing, though not the more common foot or horseback or NASCAR racing favored elsewhere in the Empire. As most Sterland, what? Oh, not the oh, Okay. As most Sterling communities are based around the farmland, geese, cows, pigs, and other animals are raced against each other in local competitions. Ha! Geese, cows, and pigs. They race geese, cows, and pigs. Nas cow. With the winner awarded ribbons and reprieve, meaning that the beast will never be destined for the dinner table. That's fantastic. I think that could be folded into any number of stories for your army. At their worst, Sterlanders are isolationist, suspicious, and hidebound, stubbornly holding onto traditional methods in a manner similar to the dwarves. They are slow to befriend, often taking years to accept newcomers into their community. Sterling communities are full of unusual customs, the practice of drinking hot ale being the most famous one, and which inspires confusion and disdain in most outsiders. Sterlanders are also notable for their particular hatred of halflings, who occupy what used to be the best farmland in Sterland. That's pretty funny that they don't like halflings, because the halflings were awarded the moot and um, kind of have their own little little uh, community there that Sterland is not uh, privy to. So it's like they took a chunk of their land and annexed it, and they um, are still a part of the empire, but Sterland has no authority in the moot. The moot is governed by its own, its own government and stuff, which is cool because they're all halflings, and halflings and hobbits are awesome. The capital is Wurtbed, or Wurtbad, in a pros uh, and it's a prosperous town of 8,800 people and is unofficially known as wine capital of the empire. At the electoral degree that all of Sterling's wines must be sold through the town. That means that I guess a lot of people go there to drink. Being the political center of Sterling, the town receives many visitors and innkeeping is something of an art amongst the locals with a great many high quality taverns and inns. The town is also famous for its hot springs, and many wealthy folk come to Wurtbad to take the waters. The Count maintains an active secret police force in order to prevent spies and assassins from plying their trades amongst the wealthy and important folk visiting the town. So I think I read most of this in Sigmar's Heirs. Does it say? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, I think that's pretty cool. Let's go to, uh, or I found an image of a typical Sterling handgunner. You can see that he's got majority green with some yellow accents. And uh, you don't want too much. I think if the, the, there was yellow in the slashes, that might be a little bit too much because there's so many slashes on him. And so looking at that, seeing that they've got, okay, a yellow uh, neck guard, uh, arm, uh, sleeves, I mean, and stockings, I think that might be, that might be enough. Here we are. So this one warhammerfb.wiki.com is, to me, 
it reads almost like the the writer doesn't speak English as a first language, or maybe they just took um, some some German or a different language and they uh, ran it through a filter without checking it because there's some there's some grammatical errors. But I found a couple of nuggets in here that I haven't been able to find anywhere else, and I think are particularly interesting. So after they go through a beginning uh, paragraph, they uh, the this part is the most interesting to me. The county is governed by Albrecht Haupt Anderson from Wartbad City on the banks of the River Stir, and it is said that at the tender age of 16, he cannot govern, govern Stirland. Of course, do not say this in his presence. He's a stalwart Sigmarite, and he doesn't support the followers of Ulrich, so that all of his government positions are held by followers of Sigmar. When he ascended to power after the mysterious death of his father, which he maintains was a plot by Ulrichans, he replaced the few followers of Ulrich remaining in office with people he could trust. Of course, in the background, Sterland has always had a dislike for Ulrich, and even more people disliked Talibikland, something that comes along from the age of the three em emperors. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to read because it's it's not in uh, um, not very coherent and consistent these sentences. But just looking over it. There are some interesting things like, yeah, the talks about dwarves and the foul, uh, halflings. Uh, just a matter of time before the young Graf convinced Barden to transform these words into action. Who's Barden? Hergarg Barden, his chief advisor, is a priest of Sigmar with very traditional views that has been feeding the young and impressionable mind of the. Um, the, the Graf Anderson, the 16-year-old leader of Sterling, with visions of a pure Sterling. Okay, that's cool. His advisor has whispered in, the, in his ears many times that Sigmar hates mutants and halflings are not much better than that and therefore should not be allowed to stay in the place of one of the most famous battles of Sigmar, the Western Plains. Barden has also recommended that the followers of Ulrich living near the border be relocated elsewhere and then repopulate the area with Sigmarite families. So right there, we get a very weird, not often seen um, kind of that's that's a weird take on on the on the character because we usually don't hear too much about the Elector Counts. Usually they'll mention their name and they'll mention some some interesting fact about them. But they went into great detail here that the the Count Elector Count of Sterling is only sixteen years old, and that his father died under mysterious circumstances. So whether it was him or whether it was somebody who thought that they could, um, I guess, influence and kind of steer the young Elector Count when he came into power. That's a cool, interesting little backstory, especially if you're into role playing and are doing a Warhammer Fantasy role play a campaign in Sterling. And he's the youngest current Elector Count of the Emperor Empire. He took the throne after his father's unexpected death in under mysterious circumstances. And I think most of these are you can see on the other side. Wary of strangers, the bloodline of Sterling Dieses hmm, is one of the least diluted. They are superstitious, but also cautious, quiet, thoughtful, and patient. They're also tight, suspicious, intolerant, and narrow-minded. For them, if something works in the past, does not uh, doesn't make sense to change it now. They have absurd and barbarous customs to the other inhabitants of the empire, such as drinking warm beer. They keep a great resentment towards halflings over losing their best lands to create the assembly nearly a thousand years ago. Sylvanian people, however, are serious, never laugh, very superstitious, and fatalistic. Sterling is a poor province with rustic customs that support many of the penalties that led wars against the vampires. Sterling's soldiers, as citizens, are poor, and their weapons and armor are simple. In fact, many of the troops of Sterling cannot afford to keep green and yellow uniforms and only carry a symbolic gesture for their traditional uniform. The rural nature of Sterland and constant mockery of its inhabitants are not to be confused with weak Sterland soldiers. In battle, they are still as devoted and fierce as any imperial soldier. So that means you don't have to paint your soldiers in green and yellow. You could paint them in browns, beiges, tans, and have a flash of green or yellow.
Yeah, okay. So so that's the most interesting things we were able to find. And here is one more time that picture. Pretty awesome. One more time that map. The address up here if you want to take a look. Uh, I would suggest you go to the main web website, windsofchaos.com, and they've got a lot of great uh, resources there. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this little Fluff Hunters video of Sterling. Sorry for butchering all of the names. I have no idea what I'm saying when I say it in English. I, I don't know the proper... <laughs> I, I wouldn't even know what kind of accent you would say them in, so those are those are my ways. Sorry, sorry again if I offended anybody who knows the proper way of pronouncing things like Siegfried Hoff and Wartbad and Sterland itself. But thanks again for watching. Hope you were able to get a little nugget of inspiration and motivation for your painting, hobby, or role-playing. And we'll see you in the next video.